So if you're into modding Game Boy Pockets or Colors, and you've installed an IPS kit and an amp, or maybe one and the other, you'll tend to find that the system just powers down or takes two attempts to power up, or you get unstable behavior. This is due to the stock regulator on the Game Boy Pockets and Colors not being able to provide enough power for these new mods. That's the reason I created the Clean Power. It works for the Game Boy Pocket and the Game Boy Color, there's one for each. It can work alongside the original regulator to supplement the 5 volt rail, so you can continue to use, say, the original screen or certain IPS screens that require the LCD voltage. Or you can remove the regulator completely if you're using the LCD kits from us, which don't require the LCD voltage, and they run entirely off the 5 volt rail, which gives you a bit better power efficiency. So let me show you how to install this. It's nice and simple. Let's just jump straight in. So firstly, we have on the board here, this is a pocket in this example. And here's the original regulator, this green board that attaches on top. And from behind, you can see the inductor. These are the caps that help with the 5 volt rail. They can stay on. Uh, but the green board is effectively the regulator. This is the thing that we need to improve in order for heavier mods to work. So let me just show you firstly how the original regulator works, what voltages to expect, and what things are doing. So if we take a look under the scope, let's bring the scope in. You can see here we have the pins of the voltage regulator, which are basically just poking through from the green board. So the green board just has power here and you can see it labeled VCC and ground that come down and in to the main board and the other side here is labeled VDD which is the output this is the LCD voltage labeled VEE and then ground so if we flip that over the way we'll be working typically on these is looking from here what you have is ground here the power in here straight from your battery after it's gone through a fuse and then on this side, here's your output. This is the pin that struggles to provide power to the system. This is your five volt rail, and this is the one we're supplementing. This is your LCD voltage, and this is ground again. So let's just see that on the scope. Let me just boot up the bench power supply. So we connect ground, and we have three volts coming in off the bench power supply. We connect ground and power here. Now when the console is off, uh, you'll see the difference, I'll measure both. So if I can try and get this all in one hand and do this at the same time, I will. Let me just bring up the multimeter. Uh, we're in DC mode, which is what we want. And let's just currently measure the voltage on the input, which is coming straight from the battery pins I've just connected to. And you can see right now with the power switch off, you see nothing. If we go to the power battery spring directly, you can see there's the voltage waiting to come in. So this regulator doesn't receive power until we turn the power switch on. So if we just turn the power switch on to the console, we can now see we're getting the three volts in. So this is the input to the regulator. And now if we hold ground here, so you can go from ground anyway, you can go from ground here uh, and just double check there. So there's your three volts in. This is the output, which should be five volts, which you can see 5.1. And this is your negative LCD voltage, which is minus 18, roughly. Try that again. There you go, so minus 18 volts. And if I bring in the clean power, you can see the clean power here can work alongside the regulator by simply soldering it in place with the original regulator here. And you might just need to use um, a short piece of wire uh, while it sits on the inductor. And you would do this if you want to maintain the original LCD screen because that uses this negative rail. Um, or you might be using certain screens like funny plane screens that also require this negative voltage rail uh, to set the brightness of the screen. Uh, the only downside to this is it will be slightly less efficient, nothing crazy, nothing that you're going to you know, really complain about. Um, but removing the original regulator, if you plan to not use original screens and use IPS screens that don't need the negative voltage, is the best way to go. Uh, the simplest way to test this would be to install this mod with three wires, so one to power here, one to ground here, one to five volts here. 
and then you would cut the 5 volts input here on the original regulator, just snip that off and bend it out of the way. This would then prevent the original regulator from running. You can test your screen that you've got installed and see if it works fine with brightness. If it does, then you could just go ahead and remove the old regulator. Otherwise, you could just simply then reconnect the cut pin here by bending it back and soldering it, and you haven't made any major changes before you've confirmed. The other option, obviously, is to simply remove the old regulator, install the clean power, and if you find you need the negative voltage, simply reinstall the old regulator. It all depends on how comfortable you are with your soldering skills. For this example, I'm going to show you how to remove the old regulator and then install the clean power. And obviously, we have the original screen here, so the screen won't show, but we'll hear the audio. So the simplest way to remove the regulator without any fancy tools is to apply plenty of solder. So just get fresh solder on the pads that you want to remove. So it's these three and the other two. And you can happily bridge them together because it's coming out. So don't worry too much about bridging them. That's just going to help with heat transfer. And then what I would do is I would get tweezers under here, wedge them in. And now I can apply some gentle force down. And it's not much. It's literally just a little bit of force on the thumb like this. And then as I warm up these two pads simultaneously, one to the other. I apply a slight bit of force on the tweezers and you will find that it will start to come loose and come away from the board. And it's all about keeping these two pads heated at the same time as the goal. Because if one is still firm, the other one won't come out. And now you can see it's twanged. And if you look now, we have it out of these holes. You can just go from here and blob solder. So now we have that side out. The other side's easier. You can pretty much just hold it in the air. Warm up these three pads at the same time by just putting your iron in a line. And you'll find the board just drops out. So once you have the old regulator out, this can be reinstalled. Let's place that to one side for a minute. Uh, to clean up these pads, pretty simple. Just clean your iron in some brass wool, which we've now just started stocking on the store. We're going to start stocking all these tools uh, to help people start getting into modding and you can just if there's a lot of solder like this you can just tilt the board up warm it and then knock the board and it will roll off and you'll get a nice hot blob of solder that you can then move out the way and then the other side here just do the same just rub on the pads and clean your iron you can use desolder wick uh, to remove excess solder i'm just trying to show you the best way here to do it with the minimal amount of tools I'll get into the more advanced ways of doing the soldering and cleaning the boards up another time. Uh, just make sure here this is a ground pad and this is the power in. So you want to make sure you don't have a join over these two pads. Uh, so that's important. We'll just flatten this pad out while we're here as well. Spread the solder out and thin it and just clean the iron and remove some. And there we have the pads ready to solder to. So we take the clean power place the clean power down. You can see it'll fit in place perfectly. All you have to do is apply a bit of solder back to the pad. Place the first pad into position. Warming it up and then you can now reposition. See we have an ever so slight slant here so just gently warm that pad back up and twist the board. And there you can see the other pins line up. Now it's a simple case of just applying solder to the pads and let them flow onto the clean power. And this corner one is the only one that might be a bit tricky for some people just to see. But you'll see it flows on just the same. And there's the joints. So pretty easy to solder. And then there it is in position. Looks nice and clean. Nothing protruding. No massive inductors or anything oversized. This is just nice, small and looks clean. 
Now we've installed it, let's just check our connections before we do anything else. We don't want to provide a dead short to the board. So let's just pull up the multimeter. Uh, we'll go into continuity mode. And now the main thing we want to check is the ground pads should be connected to each other, which they are. The power input should not be connected to ground, which it isn't. And if you shorted the metal pad just under here, that's what would happen now. This would beep. So that's good. The input and output should not be connected. The small beep is the current passing through the IC when it charges. So that's normal. If it continues to beep, there's a problem. But you see there's no connection there. And finally, check ground on the bottom right to the second pad up here. And that should not beep either. So the only two that should be connected is these two here, which are two ground points. And nothing else should be connected to each other. If that's the case, we're good to go and test this board now. So now we want to juice it up again. Let me just move the scope out of the way. And let's just apply the three volts input again to the system. This time we won't have the screen working because we've disconnected the negative LCD voltage, which we don't need because we plan to upgrade this with an IPS screen that doesn't require that. And if I connect to the main in and connect the power, we can then do the same test again. Just pull up the multimeter. You could hear the audio then, so you know the system's working. And now, just to prove it anyway, we can connect to ground and the input, which should be the three volts. And there's the three volts. And then ground and output. And you can see you've got a nice steady five volts. So that's all there really is to installing the board. It's pretty simple. The soldering is not that advanced and it's pretty hard to go wrong. And once it's installed, you're good to use all the mods you like. This will handle EverDrive plus IPS plus audio mods plus clean juice air if you want to do a complete not a full mod. Uh, this is completely capable of all the mods you need. If you have any questions or need help installing it, just let me know. And I hope you guys enjoyed it.